Greetings, everyone, and thank you for joining the Technical Assistance Webinar for the Promoting Equitable Access to Language Services in Health and Human Services for the Notice of Funding Opportunity. My name is Sinceri Cobb Souza, and I'm the Director for the Division of Program Operations with the Office of Minority Health for the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. I am joined today with my colleagues, Lieutenant Commander Lucy Martin Braswell, Office of Minority Health Project Officer, and Mr. Dwayne Barlow, Branch Chief in the Office of Grants Acquisitions and Management with the Office of the Assistant Secretary for Health for the department. Our presentation slides from today's webinar, along with a list of frequently asked questions or FAQs will be posted to the www grants.gov webpage. To access the presentation slides and the FAQ document, you will need to go to the Notice of Funding Opportunity or NOFO, that is N-O-F-O, webpage on the grants.gov website. To get there, you can search in the grants.gov search browser for the phrase, Promoting Equitable Access to language services in health and human services, or the NOFO number, that is MPI-CPI-22-00. The first result will take you to the NOFO's webpage. You will navigate to the Related Documents tab for the presentation slides and the Frequently Asked Questions or FAQ document. Please note, we have reviewed all questions that were sent prior to today's call. Many of your questions will be answered throughout the presentation. To ensure fairness, questions received via email and in today's chat will be grouped by category and answered in the FAQ of the Frequently Asked Questions document on the grants.gov website. At this time, I will turn it over to my colleague, Lieutenant Commander Lucy Martin Braswell. Thank you, Sinceri, and welcome again, everyone. Today's webinar agenda includes, next slide, please, an overview of the promoting equitable access to language services and health and human services. From here on, I will be referring to the NOFO um, with the acronym PEELS. The competitive application requirements will be covered by the Office of Grants and Acquisition Management, and we will conclude the call with a question and answer session. Before we move forward, all webinar participants have been muted. Please use the chat box to communicate questions you may have for, the inclu for inclusion in the frequently asked questions. As a reminder, the presentation slides covered in today's webinar, along with frequently asked questions document will be posted to the grants.gov webpage. Next slide. Just go to slide three. Okay. The Notice of Funding Opportunity provides information and guidance related to the applications. We encourage you to read the entire funding announcement and follow the NOFO carefully as you prepare your application. Lastly, the information provided in the NOFO takes precedence over any conflicting information in any other documents. Please go to slide four. On pages one and two of the NOFO, you will find the executive summary. The PEELS initiative is intended to reach um, and research, develop and test methods of informing limited English proficient individuals about the availability of language access services. OMH expects recipients to address health disparities among racial and ethnic minority populations and to demonstrate the impact of those efforts on outcomes and the overarching goal of advancing health equity. Project target populations must be based on health disparities. Project activities may not involve the selection or, exclu or exclusion of participants based on race and ethnicity. The HHS, Office of the Assistant Secretary for Health, encourages applicants to review all program requirements, eligibility information, application format and submission information, evaluation criteria, and other information in this funding announcement to ensure that its application complies with all requirements and instructions. 
Please go to slide five. For those of you who are, who are not familiar with the HHS Office of Minority Health, the Office of Minority Health is dedicated to improving the health of racial and ethnic minority populations through the development of health policies and programs that will eliminate health disparities. Through its demonstration projects, the Office of Minority Health supports the identification of effective approaches for improving health outcomes with the goal of promoting <clears throat> dissemination and sustainability of these approaches. Please go to slide six. For those of you who may have joined late, we would like to say again that the PowerPoint presentation accompanying today's call will be posted along with a frequently asked questions or FAQ document to the grads.gov webpage. Please continue to share questions in the chat for inclusion in the FAQ document. In this portion of the presentation, I will discuss the approaches to research, develop, and to test methods of informing limited English proficient individuals about the availability of language access services as described in NOFO. I will begin with some background information and explain how the NOFO seeks to address public health system challenges through the program approach. Currently, there are over 26 million people in the United States who do not speak English as their primary language and who have a limited ability to read, speak, write, or understand English. People with limited English proficiency have a higher risk for experiencing health care disparities in accessing health care and screenings, and consequently have decreased quality of care and poor health outcomes compared to English speakers. These vulnerable populations are less likely to have a regular health care provider, have fewer routine health visits, are more likely to defer needed health care, and have lower rates of preventative health screenings. This NOFO has an emphasis on building the capacity across the nation so that all communities are able to access resources on how to provide high quality and appropriate language services for staff to communicate effectively with limited English proficient populations. Please go to slide seven. In this next section, we will highlight important information to ensure all applicants understand the expectations of this NOFO. The Office of Minority Health <clears throat> recipients should aim to meet the following eight components in the execution of their funded projects. An environmental scan, an internal written organizational policies and procedures, identify, develop, and test evidence and form methods, expand and increase the utilization of language access services, develop and implement an evaluation plan, the dissemination of findings, a sustainability plan, and the development of disparity impact statement. The expectations of this NOFO can be found on pages nine through 12 of the NOFO. Please note this NOFO does not involve or permit lobbying. And I will now review each of the eight OMH expectations outlined in the Peel's NOFO. And as previously stated, we encourage applications to reach to read the entire NOFO to ensure your application complies with all requirements and instructions outlined in the appeals NOFO. Please go to slide eight. The first component of the OMH expectation is the environmental scan found on page nine of the NOFO. OMH expects recipients to perform an environmental scan internally with their organization and externally at the state, territorial, tribal, and or local level. The scan should include strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and challenges related to policy, technology, and educational resources in language services access for limited English proficient persons, healthcare providers, and healthcare organizations within the target area. The environmental scan should identify both internal and external to the recipient organization, the availability of translation, interpreter training and certification programs. The scan should also identify the disparities or potential gaps in language service access to limited English proficient persons in medical or other allied health settings or services. <clears throat> in addition, recipients should gather demographic and social determinants of health data on limited English proficient individuals within the target area using a data tool such as the Social Vulnerability Index, as well as the Minority Health Social Vulnerability Index. The website links for both of the, uh, the Social Vulnerability Index and Minority Health Social Vulnerability Index can be found on pages uh, nine of the NOFO. Please go to slide nine. 
The second component of the OMH expectation is titled Internal Written Organizational Policies and Procedures found on page nine of the NOFO. We expect recipients and their partners to review and revise their internal written policies and procedures uh, to help inform limited English proficient individuals of federal protection from national origin discrimination that limits meaningful access to healthcare services and programs and activities that receive federal financial assistance and to support increased access to language services for LEP or limited English proficient individuals. We also expect recipients to recruit and convene community stakeholders, LEP individuals, and other partners to inform the development and implementation of internal organizational policies, programs, and processes that enhance language access services. Please note, recipients of federal financial assistance are required to take reasonable steps to provide meaningful access to healthcare services, early regulations implementing Section 1557, the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, and guidance implementing Title VI of the Civil Rights Act. <clears throat> Please go to slide 10. The third component of the OMH expectation is titled Identify, Develop, and Test Evidence-Informed Methods, found on page 10 of the NOFO. We expect recipients to identify, develop, and implement procedures, systems, and strategies to increase knowledge of federal protection from national origin discrimination that limits meaningful access to healthcare services and programs and activities that receive federal financial assistance, and to increase utilization of language services by LEP individuals to make informed healthcare decisions. Please go to slide 11. The fourth component of the OMH expectation is expand and increase the utilization of language access services as outlined on page 10 of the NOFO. We expect recipients to partner with healthcare and nonprofit community-based organizations to expand and increase the use of language access services for LEP populations engaged in healthcare decision-making. This will allow the expansion of language resource centers in under-resourced communities, Minority serving institutions and community-based organizations can facilitate the exchange of resources from language experts and instructors for communities with limited access to language services and tools. So also generate opportunities in communities to recruit and inform community members of available training to become certified language interpreters and translators who are proficient in healthcare navigation and decision-making such as identifying organizations that provide training and coordinate certification or promote resources directly to, the, to serve the community or provide a pathway for bilingual health workers to obtain medical interpreter certification. Um, also, enhancing electronic health record systems to capture and clearly report a patient's language proficiency to improve and standardize documentation of healthcare providers and interpreter translators interactions with patients. And finally, enhance the capabilities of clinical coordinating staff to consistently link LEP persons to the correct language service and to document the use of interpreter services by leveraging EHR systems. Please go to slide 12. The fifth component of the OMH expectation is to develop and implement an evaluation plan, which is found on page 11 of the NOFA. Recipients must develop and implement a process and outcomes evaluation plan, which will clearly assess the extent to which the project results in increased number of individuals with LEP who are aware of and understand federal protections against discrimination on the basis of national origin that prevent meaningful access to healthcare services such as surveys after the awareness campaigns. Also increased knowledge of the availability of training opportunities for bilingual and multilingual community members to obtain a medical interpreter certification and increased number of trained and certified medical interpreters and increase the accuracy of health communication between the patient and the healthcare team, including ancillary services, primary care and other healthcare providers through the use of interpreter translator services and by providing access to translated culturally appropriate health information. Please go to slide 13. 
A few more items for applicants to be aware of in developing and implementing an evaluation plan are the extent to which the project will result in decreased miscommunication between health uh, professionals and LEP individuals by using teach back methods. Also decrease the use of untrained interpreters, such as minors, friends, family, or medical staff, and non-validated translation apps. The identification and implementation of strategies to enhance language access services through sy systemic change, changes such as policy development and implementation, technology utilization, education and other community supports for individuals with LEP, and education and other support for providers and medical support staff. And finally, increasing friend of services utilization for individuals with LEP by expanding access to language services across provider and community settings. Please go to slide 14. The sixth component of OMH expectation is disseminate findings also found on page 11 of the NOFO. Recipients should communicate and disseminate project knowledge and findings to include the dissemination to federal, state, territorial, and tribal public agencies, policymakers, community organizations, community members, and stakeholders. Please note all appropriate findings and products may be posted on an HHS Office of Minority Health sponsored website as determined by um, the Office of Minority Health. Please go to slide 15. The seventh component of the OMH expectation is the sustainability plan, which can be found on page 12 of the NOFO. Recipients should develop a plan for sustaining the project within one year following the start of the project. The, the sustainability plan should include the identification of key individuals and or organizations whose support will be required in order to sustain activities, the identification of an approach for securing financial, staff, supervisory, and material resources required to sustain and support continued efforts beyond the end of the project, and the identification of existing collaborative partnerships with organizations that might embed the project activities within their routine operations or provide other support for sustaining successful activities. Please go to slide 16. The final component of the OMH expectation is a disparity impact statement found on page 12 of the NOFO. Recipients should develop a disparity impact statement during the project period using local data to identify populations at risk for health disparities relative to this initiative. A disparity impact statement refers to the demographic, cultural, and linguistic data that identify the populations in which health disparities exist and the quality improvement plan designed to address denoted disparities. The disparity impact statement will provide the measurement framework for ongoing monitoring and determining the impact of the project activities on outcomes and overarching goal of advancing health equity. U.S. Department of Health and Human Services resources are provided in NOFO to assist applicants with developing the disparity impact statement. Please go to slide 17. In this next section, we will highlight important information related to the application content, which can be found on pages 17 through 30 of the NOFO. Successful applications will contain the following information as outlined in the PEELS NOFO. The project narrative, which is the most important part of the application since it will be used as the primary basis to determine whether your project meets the minimum requirements for an award under this announcement. The project narrative should provide a clear and concise description of your project. We will review the recommended components for the project narrative on the next slide. You must complete the required budget forms and submit a budget narrative with detailed justification as part of your application. The budget narrative consists of a detailed line item budget that includes calculations for all costs and activities by object class categories identified on the SF-424A form and justification of the costs. The Office of Grants and Acquisition Management will review the budget narrative in more detail later. We will also review the appendices required for your application in this section. All items described in the appendices section will count towards the total page limit of your application. You must submit them as a single electronic PDF file uploaded to the attachment section of your grants.gov application. Please go to slide 18. I'll spend a few minutes reviewing the following components of the project narrative, which can be found on pages 17 through 21 of the NOFO. 
The HHS Office of Assistant Secretary for Health recommends that your project narrative include the following components and using these as headers to organize the project narrative of your application. The first component is the statement of need, which should describe the scope of the problem that will be addressed by the proposed project, including the populations and geographic areas of focus and the disproportionate impact on racial and ethnic minority populations in the geographic area of focus. It should also describe the populations of focus, including demographic characteristics, race and ethnicity, documented health, documented health disparities, and characteristics associated with health disparities and the geographic area of focus. Relevant quantitative data can be included to describe the populations of focus. It should also describe the, any gaps and barriers related to the public health workforce and the expected impact of the project on this issue and improving the access to language services among persons with limited English proficiency. The second component is the organi organizational capability. In this section, you should describe your organization's capability to, to successfully implement the proposed project, including implementation readiness and ability to demonstrate impact within the project period. You should also describe your organization's knowledge, skills, experience, and capacity to apply or utilize methods and approaches in assessing and analyzing policies. You should also describe your organization's knowledge, skills, experience, uh, capability, or capacity to effectively work with the potential uh, populations of focus and to implement the proposed project within the project period. Your, um, Section on providing rationale for partners should include uh, and should clearly identify key personnel for your project. Um, and those key per personnel include those individuals who will oversee the technical, professional, managerial, and support functions and or assume responsibility for assuring the validity and quality of your organization's program. You should also consider clearly delineating the roles and responsibilities of project staff, partners and subrecipients, if any, and how they contribute to achieving the project's objectives and outcomes. The next section is your project plan, which will have three subcomponents as follows, goals and objectives and outcomes, the policy intervention, and your work plan. For your goals, objectives, and outcomes, you should describe your project's proposed goals and major objectives. The objectives should be specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound. You should clearly identify the measurable outcomes that will result from the project and provide specific quantified estimates of expected outcomes. We will not fund any project that does not include measurable outcomes connected to the selected policies and practices to be addressed. A measurable outcome is an observable end result that describes how a particular intervention benefits program participants. It demonstrates the impact of the intervention. For example, it should describe a change in participants' financial health and or functional status, mental well-being, knowledge, skill, attitude, awareness, or behavior. It can also describe a change in the degree to which participants exercise choice over behavior. You should consider in, in your goals, objectives, and outcomes sections, describing how you envision the project will benefit the future of the field at large. For your policy intervention, you should describe your approach to developing a plan for an environmental scan that includes demographics of limited English proficiency individuals by service area, social vulnerability, minority health social vulnerability, to generate a current snapshot of local policy systems and current language services strategies and identify gaps or other areas of improvement in language services access for LEP persons making healthcare decisions. In the policy intervention section, should also conduct a review of your organizations and your, and your partners' internal written policies and procedures to ensure individuals with LEP are aware of federal protections from national origin discrimination that limits meaningful access to healthcare services in programs and activities that receive federal financial assistance. For your work plan, 
You should provide a summary of activities supported by specific details in the work plan in your appendices and how they will assist in achieving the project goals and objectives during the entire project period. You are encouraged but are not required to use the work plan template provided in the application materials. Your activities should clearly relate and work towards your SMART goals and objectives. Your evaluation plan, please plan to discuss a robust evaluation plan that will assess the outcomes of this initiative, including whether the project identified relevant policies, reached its populations of focus, and had an impact on policies related to the identified health disparities. You will also submit a detailed logic model that demonstrates linkages between the objectives, activities, and outcomes. For your dissemination plan, describe the methods that will be used to document and disseminate your project results and findings in a timely manner and in an easily understandable format. Describe your target audience, the general public, and other parties who might be interested in using the results of the project. Include the scale and reach of the proposed dissemination, whether it's national, regional, or local. All appropriate findings and products may be posted on, the, on an HHS Office of Minority Health sponsored website, um, as stated earlier. For your sustainability approach, describe the approach for developing a sustainability plan that provides a concrete set of action steps necessary for maintaining any successful intervention associated with the successful outcomes after the award. Your sustainability approach should also describe how you will identify key individuals and or organizations whose support will be required to sustain activities. As a reminder, the Office of Grants and Acquisitions Management will review the budget narrative content shortly. We encourage all applicants to refer to the NOFO for complete project narrative requirements. Please go to slide 19. We will wrap up the programmatic related review of the NOFO by highlighting items to be included as appendices, which are covered on pages 29 through 30 of the NOFO. All items described in this section will count towards the total page limit of your application. You must submit them as a single electronic file uploaded to the attachment section of your grants.gov application. The supplemental information or supporting documentation for your work plan. Again, you may use the optional objective work plan template provided in the application materials, or you may create your own work plan. Regardless of the option you choose, the work plan you submit must address all of the content areas requested. Your work plan should reflect and be consistent with the project narrative and budget narrative and must cover all years of the period of performance. Your memorandum of agreement and our letters of commitment from partners and our sub-recipient organizations. You should include a signed memorandum of agreement for all organizations and entities that you have selected as a sub-recipient or partner to carry out any aspect of the project. The signed memorandum of agreement must clearly detail the specific role and resources, including in kind, that each entity will bring to the project, state the duration in terms of the agreement, cover the entire project period, and be signed by an authorized representative. Organizational chart includes uh, your application or your in your appendices should include an organizational chart that reflects the management structure for the project and demonstrates where the project resides within the greater organization. In addition, your chart must include the names of partners and roles and responsibilities and level of commitment to this project. For your logic model, you should submit with its application a detailed logic model that describes the inputs, objectives, activities, outputs, and short and long-term outcomes of the interventions being tested through the proposed project. All program objectives, activities, and anticipated outcomes shall be reflected in the logic model and demonstrate that the proposed project reflects a coherent approach. And finally, CV resume for key project personnel. You must submit with your application curriculum data or resumes of the project director or principal investigator 
evaluator, and all other key personnel. Key personnel include those individuals who will oversee the technical, professional, managerial, and support functions and or assume responsibility for assuring the validity and quality of your organization's program. This includes at a minimum, the program manager or program coordinator. We encourage individuals to use their full name, first, middle, and last on these documents to distinguish them for verification in the system for award management exclusion records. Please go to slide 20. Before I turn the meeting over, if you join late, you may have missed our instructions regarding today's presentation slides. The presentation slides from today's webinar and frequently asked questions will be posted to grants.gov. To access the presentation slides, you will use the search browser in the grants.gov webpage to enter the novel title, which is Promoting Equitable Access to Language Services in Health and Human Services, or the PEELS NOFO number, which is MPI-CPI-22-005. I will now turn the remainder of the webinar over to Mr. Dwayne Barlow, Branch Chief, HHS Office of Grants and Acquisition Management. Good afternoon, everyone. Again, my name is Dwayne Barlow, and at this time, we're going to discuss application submission requirements. Next slide, please. Okay, so your application is due by 6 p.m. Eastern Time on July 15, 2022. Your submission time will be determined by the date and timestamp provided by grants.gov when you complete your submission. You're strongly encouraged to submit your application a minimum of three to five days prior to the application closing date. Grants.gov may take up to 48 hours to notify you of a successful submission. If you fail to submit your application by the due date and time, we will not review it and it will receive no further consideration. Next slide, please. Eligible applicants. So those are any public or private nonprofit entity located in a state which includes one of the 50 United States, the District of Columbia, the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico, the US Virgin Islands, the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands, American Samoa, Guam, the Republic of Palau, the federal, federal, federated excuse me, states of Micronesia, the Republic of the Marshall Islands is eligible to apply for an award under this announcement. Faith-based organization and American, Indian, Alaskan, Alaska Native, Native American organizations that are public or nonprofit private entities are eligible to apply. Public or non profit community-based organizations are eligible to apply. Next slide. So here's some examples of eligible applicants. We're talking about state governments, county governments, city or township governments, special uh, district governments, independent school districts, public and state control institutions of higher education, Native American uh, tribal governments that are federally recognized, public housing authorities and Indian housing authorities, Native American tribal organizations other than federally rec recognized tribal governments, nonprofits having 501c3 status with the IRS other than institutions of higher education, nonprofits without 501c3 status with the IRS other than institutions of higher education, uh, and private nonprofit institutions of higher education. Next slide, please cost sharing or matching. Please note that you're not required to provide cost sharing or matching in your proposed budget. If you voluntarily include cost sharing in your application, you must include in your budget narrative a non-federal sources justification. During the merit review of an application, cost sharing will only be considered in the overall review of the adequacy of the total proposed budget, federal, non-federal share, to support the project proposed. Applications including voluntary cost sharing or matching that result in an award will include the cost sharing or matching commitment on the notice of award at the level proposed in the application. Any change in that commitment will require prior approval of the grants management officer. Next slide, please. The notice of funding opportunity announcement. So as you've heard before, the notice of funding opportunity uh, or the NOFO provides information and guidance uh, related to the application, please read the entire funding announcement 
Follow the NOFO carefully and keep in mind that the information provided in the NOFO takes precedence over any conflicting information in any other documents, including this presentation today. Next slide, please. Address to request application packages. Okay, so you can obtain an application package electronically by accessing a grants.gov at the URL that you see on the screen there. And you can find it by searching the assistance uh, listing number found on page one of the NOFO. The assistance listing uh, number is 93.137. Please be sure to subscribe to the announcement in grants.gov so you receive notification of any updates to the NOFO or supporting, supporting documents. Next slide, please. OSH requires that all applications be submitted electronically via grants.gov unless an exemption has been granted by the grants management officer. If you submit an application via any other electronic communication, it will not be accepted for review. Now, grants.gov is a website portal. All funding opportunities and grant application packages are made available on grants.gov. An application will not be considered valid until all application components are entered in grants.gov and received by OASH Grants Acquisitions Management the division according to the deadline specified in the date section of the NOFO. Please contact uh, grants.gov with any questions or concerns regarding the electronic application process, or you can choose to uh, dial them up on the telephone at 1-800-518-4726. Next slide, please. Okay, your applications must be submitted as three files. File one should uh, include the entire project narrative, File two should include the entire budget narrative, including supporting documentation described in the budget narrative content section. In file three, you should have all documents in the appendices uploaded in the attachment section of your grants.gov application. And please also note that required standard forms do not apply towards your page count limitations in the submission requirements as stated in the disqualification criteria of the NOFO. Next slide, please. Any files uploaded or attached to the grants.gov application must be of the following formats. You can use Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, Adobe PDF, or any of the image formats that we have here, JPEG, GIF, TIFF, or BMP. Microsoft Excel files will not be accepted. HHS OS strongly recommends that electronic applications be uploaded as Adobe PDF. If you convert to PDF prior to submission, you may pre prevent any unintentional formatting that might occur with the submission of an editable document. You can check the page count of your PDF and or print the file to ensure that the document does not exceed the page limit. Next slide, please. Please be complete and do not leave blanks on forms unless the information is clearly not applicable. Keep in mind that the individual submitting the application forms must have the legal authority to act on behalf of your organization. Next slide, please. To ensure successful submission of your application, please carefully follow the step-by-step -step instructions provided at the blue URL that you see on the screen here. These questions uh, are kept up to date and also provide links to frequently asked questions, questions and other troubleshooting information. Next slide, please. Okay, so application elements. With regard to the forms, you wanna have an application for federal assistance, assistance or the SF-424. You wanna have a budget, budget information for non-construction programs, that's SF-424A. Assurances for non-construction programs, SF-424B. The disclosure of lobbying activities, that's SF-LLL and the project abstract summary. With regard to files, you want to, uh, for project narrative, you want to submit all project narrative content as a single file. For budget narrative, submit all budget narrative content as a single acceptable file. With regard to uh, appendices, please submit all appendix con uh, content as a single acceptable file. Next slide, please. With regard to your project abstract summary, if you receive an award under this announcement, your project abstract summary will be published. So please don't include any proprietary or confidential information in your project abstract summary. Next slide, please. 
With regard to application format, please be sure to follow the project narrative format instructions in the NOFO. Your application will be disqualified if it does not conform to the format requirements. You must double space the project narrative pages. You must use 12 point font. You should use an easily readable typeface such as Times New Roman or Arial. You may single space tables or use alternate front fonts, but you must ensure that the tables are easy to read. For appendices and uh, budget narrative, you should use the same formatting specified for the project narrative. Appendix documents such as resumes may use alternate formats common to such documents. Next slide, please. UEI number and the system for award management or SAM. So on April 4, 2022, the federal government completed its transition from using the nine digit DUNS number as the official unique entity identifier to the 12 digit UEI or SAM number. The UEI will be required for submission of applications. You may find additional information about the transition for both existing and new SAM registrants at the URL that you see on the screen. Next slide, please. Okay, the system for award management. Your organization must register online in the system for award management or SAM. Applicants are advised to begin the SAM registration process immediately. If you are selected for an award, an active SAM registration may be required prior to receiving an award. You should make sure your SAM registration uh, information is accurate, especially your organization's legal name and physical address, including your ZIP plus four. Should you successfully compete and receive an award, this information as it appears in SAM must be included on a notice of award. Instructions for uh, updating this information can be found at the URL that you see listed at, uh, listed below. Next slide, please. New registrations in the system for award management. If you are registering a new entity in SAM.gov, you need to create a login.gov account if you don't already have one. Please note that the complete process for registering a new entity involves submission of a notarized letter. The minimum time frame to complete an initial SAM registration online is 30 minutes. The time frame for applicants' uh, registrations to become active is up to 10 days and may take longer depending on volume. The average time frame for updates in SAM.gov to appear in grants.gov is up to 72 hours. Next slide, please. Renewal registration in SAM. SAM registrations must be renewed each year. An active SAM registration may be required prior to receiving a new or continuation award. If you are renewing your registration, your old SAM.gov username and password may not work anymore. You'll need to create a login.gov account if you don't already have one. Please review the information on SAM.gov regarding transition of existing registrations from DUNS to UEI. Next slide, please. We strongly recommend applicants check for an active uh, registration in SAM well before the application deadline. If you are successful and you receive an award, you must maintain an active SAM registration with the current information at all times during the active award. If you have not complied with the SAM registration requirements, HHS OS may determine that you are not qualified to receive an award and we may use that, that determination as a basis for making an award to another applicant. Should you successfully compete and receive an award, all first tier sub award recipients must have a DUNS UEI number at the time you, the recipient, make a sub award. Next slide, please. Funding restrictions. If you are successful and receive an award by accepting the award, you agree that the award and any activities thereunder are subject to all provisions of 45 CFR Part 75 currently in effect or implementing implemented during the period of award of the department regulations and policies in effect at the time of the award and applicable uh, statutory provisions. Keep in mind that costs must be allowable, allocable, reasonable, and necessary direct expenses or indirect costs in accordance with regulations and current policy. Indirect costs may be included per 45 CFR 75 uh, 414 and applicants should indicate 
which method or rate is used for their application. Keep in mind that pre-award costs are not allowed and the current salary limitation is $203,700 and that was made effective January, 2022. Next slide, please. Budget narrative and forms must be consistent with the requirements of the NOFO. Budgeted costs must reflect proposed activities. Budget line item descriptions and justification requirements are explained in the NOFO. Suggested table formats are also in the NOFO. There's also information for the plan for oversight of federal award funds. Keep in mind that forms, budget narrative, and detailed justifications do not count towards page limit. Next slide, please. Application disqualification criteria. If your application does not meet the following requirements, it will be disqualified and receive no further consideration. So the application has to be submitted electronically via www.grants.gov by the due date and time, unless an exemption was uh, granted to business days prior to the deadline. Um, keep in mind that if you successfully submit multiple applications for the same project, we will only review the last application received by the deadline. HHS, OASH, and GAM, we have to deem your application eligible and you must complete the required forms in the application package. That's the SF-424, the SF-424A, SF-424B, the SF-LLL, and the project abstract summary. Keep in mind that your application must be submitted in the English language and must be in terms of US dollars. Next slide, please. Your project narrative must be double spaced on the equivalent of eight and a half by 11 page side with one inch margins on all sides and font size not less than 12 points. The project narrative must not exceed 30 pages and the total application including project narrative must not exceed 50 pages. The instruction pages built into the work plan template which is optional do not count toward the overall page limit. Next slide please. Now, your federal funds requests, including indirect costs, should not exceed the maximum indicated in the award ceiling, which is 375,000. Your federal funds requests, including indirect costs, must not be, be below the minimum indicated in the award floor, which is $300,000. If you've included any voluntary cost sharing or matching, you must include in your budget narrative a non-federal sources justification. Your application must meet any application responsiveness criteria under section E3, which is other application responsiveness criteria. Next slide, please. Applications that lack the required supporting documentation or submit additional appendix files will not be disqualified from competitive review. However, this may impact your application scoring under the evaluation criteria. So please be sure to follow the submission instructions carefully. Next slide, please. Okay, now here is a listing of the application review criteria. You heard um, some things about that earlier in our presentation. So statement of need receives 10 points, organizational uh, capability, 15 points, the project plan, goals and objectives, 10 points, the project plan, policy intervention, 15 points, Project plan, work plan, 10 points. The evaluation plan is worth 20 points. The dissemination plan, 10 points. Sustainability approach, five points. And then the budget reasonableness, reasonableness, excuse me, will receive five points. Next slide, please. Application merit review. So eligible applications will be reviewed and assessed by a panel of independent reviewers technical expertise in the applicable fields according to the criteria listed in the NOFA. The merit review process is formal and confidential. Federal staff are available to answer questions and to ensure the process is, consi process is consistent and fair, but do not participate in discussion and assessment of the application. Okay, so then the applications are reviewed first by GAM staff for administrative and business compliance and then by OMH program office staff for programmatic compliance. Next slide, please. Funding decisions. So the director of the Office of Minority Health will make final award selections to be recommended to the grants management officer for risk analysis. 
making these decisions, the director of the Office of Minority Health will take into consideration the following additional factors, factor in this case being equitable geographic distri distribution of projects. Now, upon completion of risk analysis and concurrence of the grants management officer, HHS, HHS OASH will then issue notices of award. No award decision is final until a notice of award is issued. All award decisions, including level of funding, if an award is made, are final and you may not appeal. Next slide, please. We are not obligated to make any federal award as a result of this announcement. Only the grants management officer or the GMO can bind the federal government to the expenditure of funds. If you receive communications to negotiate an award or request uh, additional or clarifying information. This does not mean you will receive an award. It only means that your application is still under consideration. All decision award decisions, including level of funding, if an award is made again, are final and you may not appeal. Next slide, please. Okay, funding, of pro funding process, the review of risk posed by the applicant. HHS OASH will evaluate each application in the fundable range for risk posed by the applicant before issuing an award in accordance with 45 CFR 75205. OASH will use a risk-based approach and may consider any items such as the following as stated in the NOFO. So we'll take a, let, take a look at the applicant's financial stability. We'll take a look at the quality of management systems and the ability to meet the management standards as prescribed in 45 CFR Part 75. We'll take a look at an applicant's history of performance. We'll take a look at reports and findings from audits performed. And we'll also take a look at the applicant's ability to effectively implement statutory, regulatory, or other uh, requirements imposed on non-federal entities. Next slide, please plan for oversight of federal award funds. If your internal controls are available online, you may provide the link as a part of your plan in the budget narrative. We have also included supplementary material which contains questions applicants may find useful in considering their plan for oversight of federal funds. Next slide, please. Non-funded application as a result of risk review. If we determine that your organization does not meet either or both of the minimum qualification standards as described in 45 CFR 75205A2, and we do not make an award to you as a result, we, as a result, we must report that determination to FAPIS if certain conditions apply. The information reported in FAPIS is available for other organizations to review when considering you for an award. Next slide, please. Okay, now we get to the notice of award. Keep in mind that the notice of award notifies a successful applicant of the selection, the award amount, project and budget periods. It includes any conditions on the award. In other words, requirements that must be met as a condition of receiving the grant funds. It also includes standard terms, reporting requirements and contact information for OASH GAM and the program office. Next slide, please. GAM is the official point of contact for awardees throughout the uh, award life cycle. All official communication related to the award is between GAM and the successful applicant. Unsuccessful applicants will be notified by the program office via letter. Next slide, please. Okay, so here's some summary and tips for your application submissions. With regard to the project narrative, please be clear, complete, and concise in the project description, following and address exactly what is requested in the NOFO. Please don't make the reviewer search for the required information. Generally, the easier the application is to review, the better the rating or the score will be. Reviewers are not allowed to do external research or follow embedded, embedded links, so please keep that in mind. Please clearly identify the sections of the application and indicate which component is being addressed. Project narrative must include all required information within the page limit. Do not use appendices to expand the page limit. Next slide, please. Okay, so for the project narrative description, again, and you heard this before, make your goals and objectives SMART. That is specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time frame if required in the NOFO. 
The activities you uh, present in the work plan should relate directly to the proposed goals and objectives of the project. Your program work plan, evaluation plan, and other requested planning documents and the budget should provide a complete picture of how you will address the needs as well as address the purpose and expectations in the NOFA on your project. Next slide, please. Okay, with regard to staffing, the staffing for this project should be appropriate and reasonable for the goals, objectives, and activities of the proposed project. Please be complete in describing what staff will do, the expertise required, and the percent time they will be assigned to the project. Next slide, please. With regard to the budget, your budget should include adequate funds to carry out the proposed work plan, evaluation plan, and administrative responsibilities for the project. Your budget should be reasonable and relate directly to the goals and objectives of the project. Please do not request more funds than are available as listed in the NOFA. This amount is inclusive of indirect cost. The operating budget should be complete and include federal and non-federal funds and projected program income. For example, fees and third party, third party payers and other contributing funds. Next slide, please. Overall, on your documents, please include full names, that's first, middle, and last, for authorized officials, principal and uh, investigators, and project directors, and all essential key personnel. Keep in mind that electronic submission is required. Please don't wait until the last minute to begin SAM registration or update your registration. And in general, Please don't wait until the last minute to begin the electronic submission um, process because problems could arise. Next slide, please. Okay, if you have questions about the NOFA, for program questions, you can reach out, of course, to the program office, which is the Office of Minority Health. Uh, the contact person would be uh, Paul Rodriguez. His email and telephone number is listed here on the screen. If you have administrative or financial questions, you can reach out to me. Again, my name is Dwayne Barlow. My email is listed here. Telephone number for me is uh, listed on the screen as well. Okay, for electronic submission requirements, um, with regard to grants.gov applicant support, you can use, you can go directly to grants.gov. You can email them at support at grants.gov, or you can use that telephone number that I mentioned earlier. It would be 1-800-518-4726. Uh, we want to give you this reminder to please uh, or understand that, you know, we, you know, don't contact the OASH program or grants office staff for grants.gov uh, issues. And the reason why we say this, we add this here is because we don't manage that particular website. Next slide, please. At this time, we'd like to move to the question and answer session, and I thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, please continue to enter your questions in the chat box for today's uh, technical assistance webinar. If we are unable to answer your question during our webinar today, we will incorporate your question with a response in the frequently asked questions document. Now we will begin with our first question is concerning eligible entities. So this question is um, for either our grants contact or our program uh, contact today. If you would, if you could tell us um, what applicants are eligible and how will they be defined for this funding opportunity? I can take that question, please. So um, applicants eligible for this opportunity would be any public or private nonprofit entity located in the state which includes one of the 50 United States, the District of Columbia, the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico, the US Virgin Islands, the Commonwealth of uh, the Northern Mariana Islands, American Samoa, Guam, the Republic of Palau, the Federal Federated States of Micronesia, and the Republic of the Marshall Islands. Again, they're eligible to apply for an award under this announcement. Faith-based organizations and American Indian, Alaska Native, Native American organizations that are pub public or nonprofit private entities are eligible to apply. Public or nonprofit community based organizations are eligible to apply. I would just want to repeat the examples of eligible in uh, institutions, and they are state governments, US territories, county governments, city or township governments, special district governments, 
independent school districts, public and state control instances of institutions of higher education, Native American tribal governments that are federally uh, recognized, public housing authorities, Indian housing uh, authorities, Native American tribal organizations other than federally recognized tribal governments, nonprofits having a 501c3 status with the IRS, nonprofits without 501c3 uh, status with the IRS or private nonprofit institutions of higher education. Thank you. Next question. Are eligible communities uh, those with high proportions of racial and ethnic minorities and who will decide? Hi, I can take that question. Um, all eligible entities that submit applications will advance through the screening process and those with eligible applications will advance to the objective review. Um, Portion your problem statement and the data you present to support the need of your community and other requirement uh, required elements um, are vital in determining how well your application does in that merit review process. I um, encourage you to review the application review information on pages 37 through 41 of the uh, NOFO and the Deputy Assistant Secretary for Minority Health will provide recommendations for funding of the grant management um, to the grants management officer to conduct risk analysis. Uh, in providing these recommendations, the Deputy Assistant Secretary for Minority Health will take into consideration um, um, equitable geographic distribution of projects as part of that review process. Thank you. Next question uh, for grants. Are for-profit organizations eligible to participate in this funding opportunity? No. Only public or private nonprofit entities uh, are eligible to participate. Please see the NOFO on page, the pages 13 and 14. Thank you. Next question um, for grants. Is the award amount listed for one year or three years? Okay. So the award ceiling and floor amounts are listed per budget period, which are 12 months. The project period is for three years. Please note that due to the timing of the award, uh, timing of award issuance or other administrative factors, uh, funding for all approved budget periods beyond the first year is generally the level with, uh, generally level with the initial award amount and is contingent upon the availability of funds, satisfactory progress uh, of the project, adequate steward stewardship of federal funds and the best interests of the government as outlined on page 13 of the NOFA. Okay, uh, follow-up question for grants. Uh, to clarify, the funding ceiling is 375,000 per budget period or one year with up to three years of funding as a possibility. Okay, so on page 13 of the NOFO, the estimated ceiling of 375,000 and the floor award amount of 300,000 is the total cost that should include direct and indirect costs. Great. Next question is in the category of preparing to apply for the uh, NOFO. Um, so first question, what is the deadline for submitting an application in response to this funding opportunity? Grants. Okay. Um, applications are due July 15th, 2022 by 6 p.m. Eastern time. To receive consideration, you must submit your application electronically via grants.gov no later than this due date and time. Please see the NOFO on page six. Next question. Uh, uh, in the same category of preparing to apply, uh, how can I stay up to date on any updates or changes to the notice of funding opportunity or NOFO? That is additional information and resources and any further developments. Okay, so the best way to stay up to date is to subscribe to this NOFO on grants.gov. Please go to grants.gov and click the search grants tab in the upper left of the screen. Okay, so on the next screen, you look for the basic search criteria fields under search grants header in the upper left corner. When you enter the opportunity uh, number in the opportunity number field and click the search button. Then you click on the link under the opportunity number header. 
you'll see a red subscribe icon, icon excuse me, on the right corner. Then you'll be prompted to either enter your username and password to establish one, after which you'll be able to subscribe and then get the alerts. Great. Next question. Who should I contact if I still have questions about this NOFO or questions about developing my application? Okay, who to contact will depend on the nature of your question. For programmatic questions such as developing elements of your application, you can contact Paul Rodriguez. And again, you'll have access to his email address. Uh, and please CC me, Dwayne Barlow, on your email. And you can contact me for financial and grants related questions. And please CC Paul on your email uh, when you have emails come to me. Okay, and as a follow-up, who should I contact if I have issues with the grants.gov portal or with the electronic application process? Please contact grants.gov application support. Now, as we have on the screen here, you can reach out to them via email at support at grants.gov, or you can use the telephone number at 1-800-518-4726. And this information again is uh, included on the NOFO on page 52. Okay. Next question for program. Can you explain the page limits or what does and what does not count for the limits? Thank you. Your project narrative is limited to 30 pages and does not include your project abstract summary. Since your project narrative plus appendices cannot exceed 50 pages, that leaves 20 pages for your appendices. The appendices should include the items described on pages 29 and 30 of the NOFO. And um, I can also list them really quickly, supplemental information or the supporting documentation for your work plan, a project populations of focus, uh, any memorandums of agreement or letters of commitment from partners, subrecipient organizations and agencies, the organizational chart, uh, your logic model and the uh, curriculum vita and resume for key project personnel. Uh, you must must submit these appendices as a single electronic file uploaded to the attachment sections of your grants.gov um, application. And just as a reminder, uh, the following forms do not count towards your 50 page limit. And that is the SF-424, the SF-424A, the SF-424B, the SFLLL, the project abstract summary, and the budget narrative. These um, items or informs do not count towards your 50 page limit. Next question for program. Are applications from rural areas and states considered or rated equally in the competitive review process? Thank you. Refer to pages 36 through 41 of the NOFO. All eligible entities that advance to the independent review panel um, stage will be evaluated based on the quality of their responses, uh, the data presented, and other required elements. The next two questions are for program. What is the population of focus for this initiative? This initiative is intended to re research, develop, and test methods of informing limited English proficiency um, individuals about the availability of language access services. Um, this information is also uh, provided to you on page one of the NOFO. OMH expects recipients to address health disparities among racial and ethnic minority populations as to demonstrate uh, the impact of those efforts on outcomes and the overarching goal of advancing health equity. The project target populations must be based on health disparities. Um, and again, the project activities may not involve the selection or exclusion of participants based on race and ethnicity. Follow-up, uh, is this grant considered research or program funds? This competitive grant is intended to research, develop, and test methods of informing limited English proficient individuals about the availability of language access services. Follow-up question for program. Are we supposed to address all the bullets related to the expectations? Yes, award recipients under this announcement should meet uh, each of the expectations in the execution of their funded projects. And those expectations are listed on nine, pages nine through 12 of the NOFO. Uh, next question, program. What is the disparity impact statement expectation? That is, what is the purpose 
of the disparity impact statement or the DIS? Disparity impact statement refers to the demographic, cultural, and linguistic data that identifies the population of which health disparities exist and the quality improvement plan designed to address those uh, noted disparities. Um, the disparity impact statement should identify subpopulations at highest risk for health disparities for its focused population. Um, it will also provide the contextual and measurement framework for ongoing monitoring and determining the impact of the project activities on outcomes and the overarching goal of advancing health equity. The information uh, around the disparity impact statement is listed on pages 12 of the NOFO. Um, it is not a required part of the application. Only those um, applicants who receive awards are expected to complete the disparity impact statement after the project has started. Next question, program. Uh, what is CLASS? Sure. Um, and believe this information is on page 56 of the NOFO, uh, the National Standards for Culturally and Linguistically Appropriate Services in Health and Human um, in Health and Healthcare are a set of 15 action steps that provide guidance for providing healthcare and services that are responsive to diverse cultural health beliefs and practices, preferred languages, health literacy, and other commu communication needs. Um, and the link um, for the um, national class. Um, it's also listed in the NOFO on page 56. Okay, next. Um, what does evidence-informed methods refer to program? Evidence-informed methods involve the integration of established evidence-based practices alongside practitioner expertise and the people experiencing the practice. So as outlined on page 10 of the NOFO, uh, OMH expects recipients to use evidence-informed methods to identify, develop, and implement procedures, systems, and strategies to increase knowledge of federal protection from national origin discrimination that limits meaningful access to healthcare services and programs and activities that uh, receive financial assistance, and increase utilization of language services for limited English proficient um, individuals to make informed healthcare decisions. Okay, follow-up question for program. What collaborations and partnerships are expected in this funding opportunity? OMH expects recipients to partner and, with healthcare and nonprofit community-based organizations to expand and increase the use of language access services for LEP populations engage in healthcare decision-making. Uh, Minority-serving institutions, community-based organizations, um, can facilitate exchanges of resources and language experts and instructors for communities with limited access to language uh, services and tools. Um, the Office of Minority Health, Health also expects recipients to recruit and convene community stakeholders, LEP individuals, and other partners to inform the development and implementation of internal organizational policies, programs, and processes that enhance language access services. Next uh, category. Uh, evaluation and performance management. Um, if you would, if you could tell us what are OMH's um, expectations as it relates to data reporting for this project? Uh, do we need to collect and report on data at baseline, exit, and follow-up? Yes, uh, recipients um, are expected to and must develop and implement a process and an outcomes evaluation plan, which will clearly uh, delineate and assess the extent to which the project results um, are um, connected to the activities. And it should um, align with the baseline uh, interim and um, post-intervention uh, data collection activities. And those uh, are listed on pages 9 through 11 of the note. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, we want to thank our presenters today, Lieutenant Commander Lucy Martin Braswell and Mr. Dwayne Barlow. Please note, we will upload the Frequently Asked Questions document and the presentation slides to the grants.gov NOFO page. Thank you all for joining us for the Office of Minority Health's Technical Assistance Webinar and best of luck on your competitive application submissions. Good day.